So in this lecture, we're going to continue to talk about time series models. We're going to take a, a turn from our previous emphasis on Bayesian state space models and switch to, to talking about some more classical time series approaches. So before I dive in uh, to some methods, I want to start with some concepts and definitions. So first, let's imagine there's some variable y that we're absor observing, um, and that y is a, a function that's a pr probabilistic, so a random number. It's a function of some parameters and time. So it's changing both with, uh, yeah, it's changing with time. It's explicitly a function of time. And then, you know, the model has, may have additional parameters with it. Uh, from that concept of, of y being a time series, a random number with some probability distribution f, uh, let us define mu of t as the expected value <clears throat> of y at that time. Um, and in a time series, that mu is known as the trend. And if we have that concept of the trend, <clears throat> we can also define um, the auto covariance, which is uh, very much like a covariance, but a covariance between two points in time. So imagine uh, we have the covariance between time point t and time point s. It's the covariance of y with itself at different points in time, which is this expected value of y at t minus mu of t uh, times y of s, y at s minus mu at s. So uh, kind of the residual between the random variable and its expected value uh, at each time, the covariance between those two things. Okay, so with those concepts in mind, I want to introduce a, a concept that's uh, pretty central to classic time series analysis, which is the idea of stationarity, uh, because a lot of uh, classical uh, time series methods focus on uh, time series that meet this assumption of, of stationarity. So strict stationarity uh, is when the, the joint probability distribution of y, which again is a random variable distributed according to f, uh, does not change depending on time. So f at some t uh, sub i plus s is going to be the same as f at time t sub j plus s. Um, so relative to some point in the future s, uh, you know, the time ahead of that i or j, you know, the ex, uh, joint probability distribution uh, does not change between uh, t these two times, t t i s and t j and s. Um, now that's a pretty high bar because it requires you know knowledge of the full joint. PDF of y at all times, um, you know. So what often gets focused on uh, more practically is this idea of second order stationarity, uh, which is where the, the expected value as a function of time is just an expected value, um, so there's no trend in the data, and that the covariance between time t and s is just a function of the distance between them in time. So it doesn't actually matter what time you are. The covariance isn't changing through time. It's just a function of lag. So covariance is only a function of the difference in time. Uh, and so we're instead of looking at the full joint probability distribution, we're looking instead just at the first two moments, the mean and the covariance. Uh, so you can imagine that strict stationarity extends this out to you know, the full distribution in all possible moments in quantiles. but uh, instead, we're going to focus on these these two central statistics, which are what we focused a lot on uh, so far this semester, anyway. Okay, 